Good morning, everyone. If I can please ask you to uh, take your seats, we'll get started here this morning. My name is Mike Hicks. I am on the, uh, the Board of Directors of the Fuel Cell Seminar and Exposition. I'm also the President of the U.S. Fuel Cell Council and uh, an employee of IDATEC. And this morning I'm here to talk uh, with my uh, U.S. Fuel Cell Council hat on and, give, and provide you with a, an overview of the state of the industry of, uh, of what I see what's going on in the last year. So to begin with, first let me thank the seminar, seminar organizers for the chance to speak to the state of our industry for the second year in a row. This is a chance to take our collective pulse to reflect, to celebrate, to rededicate ourselves to the success of our industry and what a year it has been. A year ago, we were celebrating a new sense of collective energy brought on by the success in restoring federal research funds for fuel cell and hydrogen fuel. This year, we are celebrating a different kind of energy brought on by success in the marketplace. There's a sense that the industry is turning the corner, or perhaps more aptly, opening a door to opportunity. There's growing realization that the success of our industry will not be measured by the size of the DOE budget, but by the content of our order books. The last year was about policy. This year is about products. Not so long ago, we were asking others, will it work? Will it last? Will it fit in a box? This year, we are asking others, will you buy it? A few years ago, we talked about technical potential. Now we talk about profit potential. Once we talked about grants and demonstrations, now we talk about prices and delivery dates, supply chain, and cost reduction, service agreements, guarantees, and customer satisfaction. We will hear in a few minutes from some of these customers who are having success in forklifts, primary power, backup power systems. Government has been a very valuable partner in these early sales. The very first Department of Energy products, projects were financed by the U.S. Recovery Act were fuel cell projects. Our industry has gained great benefit from the, and great marketplace visibility as a result. Yet, the majority of forklift customers in 2010 did not receive market transformation support. They were convinced by the business case. Forklift shipments will more than triple this year. One customer said his units run longer, don't lose power, and recharge more quickly than batteries, or refuel more quickly, I should say, than batteries. Another said his units will pay for themselves in 11 months. High profile customers like Google and eBay bought prime power units this year for data centers because they need a clean, reliable, assured source of power. One customer said he cut his electricity bill by $15,000 a month. Developers and supermarket chains who integrated fuel cells into new apartment complexes and grocery stores this year did so for energy savings, design flexibility, and marketing edge. One customer estimated savings at $150,000 a year in one store alone. And if, the power, and if there's a power outage, you can still keep shopping. Business, retail stores, hotels, and university campuses installed fuel cell combined heat and power systems as large as 2.4 megawatts to reduce energy costs and increase operational flexibility. One hotel rented an, an extra 1,000 room nights due to its fuel cells. A Defense Department agency operated a fuel cell unmanned vehicle for 12 miles because DOD needs reliable devices that go where soldiers can't or do not want to. One customer admitted he did not have a test cycle yet because nothing had ever gone that far before. Food processing companies use fuel cells to turn processed waste into money. One customer estimated savings of more than one million a year, but for another, the value was in helping make energy self-sufficiency a reality. Telecom companies install fuel cells for primary and backup power for the reliability, long run time, and durability in difficult operating conditions. One co company estimated savings of $250,000 the first year but the actual savings totaled nearly $700,000 in the first year of grid-free operation. Wastewater treatment plants installed fuel cells to recover waste gases under the threat of regulation and discovered that they helped save on energy bills. One customer cited reliability, energy security, and ultra-clean power generation. There are many similar success stories. Megawatt-scale power generation systems, fuel cell vehicles, large and small in the hundreds, more than 5,000 residential units with product reliability once thought unattainable, fuel cell powered flight, another thing people said was impossible, 
fuel cell battery combinations for recreational vehicles, battery chargers for personal use where you can literally hold the future in the palm of your hand. Fuel cells are in every field on every continent, even Antarctica. We are seeing market growth in Latin America, Indonesia, and the Middle East. Newly visible partnerships in Korea, Chile, and South America, and substantial investment in RD&D and infrastructure in Europe. Fuel cell forklift deployment, along with the 150 fuel cell electric vehicles operating in California, GM's project driveway, and other vehicle deployments in the hundreds around the world are giving average people all over the globe the possibility to use hydrogen in their everyday lives without incident. Fuel cell vehicle fills are in the hundreds of thousands already and growing rapidly. So the business case for fuel cells is emerging, but don't underestimate the drivers that go beyond dollars and cents, pounds and euros. Sprint, Verizon, Campbell Soup, Google, Sierra Nevada, eBay, and Hilton, Hel Hilton Hotels and Walmart are many, many, and many, many other leading companies are publicly committed to sustainable energy future, often with measurable goals. Early fuel cell adopters often talk about CO2 emission reductions and economic benefits in the same sentence. Increasingly, sustainability is not only expected, but required. Walmart and Sprint and many others expect sustainability from their suppliers. Sustainability is emerging as an edge for fuel cells and hydrogen energy. Energy efficiency makes conventional systems more sustainable and reduces CO2 emissions. Renewable hydrogen is also becoming a reality, driven increasingly by the marketplace imperatives. Who would have thought five years ago that Europe, European utilities would try, be trying to cope with too much wind power? Our industry is evolving rapidly to meet these changing imperatives and the markets they create. Projects large and small are focusing on integrated renewable hydrogen solutions. Germany has launched a program to store wind, in, wind energy generated for hydrogen for use in fuel cell passenger cars. There's a major program underway in North Africa to convert wind energy to hydrogen for industrial use while bypassing the grid entirely. Here in the US, companies are extracting hydrogen from wind, energy in Colorado, geothermal energy in Hawaii, landfill gas in South Carolina, gases from wastewater treatment, and food processing in New York, Connecticut, and California. California's latest generation of vehicle refueling stations is 33% renewably derived on average. More companies are positioning themselves as partners in integrated solutions that may involve batteries, renewable wind, solar, geothermal power, and biofuels or industrial process gases. In other words, companies are offering integrated systems to meet the customer needs rather than the other way around. Progress in system components aimed at fuel flexibility has been exceptional, from electrolyzers to biofuel reformers. As new products are added to the portfolio, the central role of fuel cells and hydrogen energy across the range of energy options will become obvious. This year saw encouraging process in solid oxide development for markets as varied as homes, heavy trucks, aircraft, and power stations. Also this year, passenger vehicle performance is up, costs are down, companies making are making production commitments, and new hydrogen fuel fueling technologies are driving down fuel costs. It ought to be obvious to anyone who sh actually shops for a car that fuel cell vehicles are the electric vehicles that people want. Full size, full function, full utility, fast refill, and some of them have very hot designs. These trends are proving in the marketplace what we have argued for a long time. Fuel cells and hydrogen energy are a central part of the portfolio of energy options we make other options better. Fuel cells and hydrogen energy are emerging just at the right time. My colleague Ruth Cox speaks to, of a transition from the information age to the new energy age. Modern society requires a stable, affordable, and sustainable supply of energy to make, ship, and sell, and enjoy products, services, and communications. On the other hand, lack of reliable power 24 hours a day inhibits economic growth and degrades the quality of life. The International Energy Agency calls this energy poverty because to be without energy is to be poor. Even in the developed wor world, energy suppliers are often so constrained that utilities ask for customers' help for reducing demand or simply rationing supply. Electricity is so vital to the economic health of the United States that the annual cost of power interruptions is estimated to be $80 billion. Our challenge is to fill these energy gaps while avoiding the air and water pollution and global instability that were the legacy of traditional energy supply. That, is, that challenge is our opportunity. 
As we have seen, fuel cells and hydrogen energy are already playing a part in the transition to the energy future, but it's way too early to declare victory. To gain promise offered by the energy age, partnership with government is still essential. Public-private partnerships have formed all over the world that link fuel cell commercialization with jobs, economic growth, and high-tech capacity. And the stakes are high. <clears throat> Up to three million jobs worldwide for this industry. Government tax policies can expand early markets. Government agency purchases would help them meet their sustainability mandates and provide cost and performance benefits while meeting the, our industry's hunger for sales. Partnership would also open doors to private sector customers and investors. Last year, here in the U.S., working together, we made great pro progress in Washington, D.C. We need more. We need a shift in policy to assure that the four portfolio of energy technologies is brought to bear to accelerate the transition and recognize the enabling role of fuel cells and hydrogen energy. The U.S. Fuel Cell Council has made this shift its number one priority. The new policy includes a robust research and development program at the Department of Energy and includes purchases by the Defense Department where the Council is already working collaboratively and other departments and agencies of government. It includes market transformation, assistance for emerging products, and public-private cooperation and assessment of new commercial pathways such as aviation. These and other enlightened policies will provide consistent long-term support in the marketplace now and with future products and enhance America's knowledge base. The U.S. Fuel Cell Council has also been reaching out to potential allies who share the challenges and opportunities of the new energy age, natural gas, coal, nuclear, and the portfolio of renewable energy technologies, with the goal of an alliance pursuing a smart grid to link the technologies. We saw an example of the Council's work in yesterday's afternoon natural gas panel.